Something I've always thought was interesting was the anatomy, the external anatomy of the purple sea urchin under microscope, although the internal is pretty cool too. Strongulus centratus purpuratus uh, is the species name, and I've got two individuals here that we can look at. Um, here's one and here's the other, so let's take a look. So this is the aboral surface of the urchin. You would think of it as the top of the urchin. Um, you can see the spines here as well as those things waving around which are tube feet and they've got little suction cups on the end. They use them for locomotion as you see it, it tried to run away on us there. Uh, they also use it to attach to things and pull pieces of shell or drift algae on top of them. I'm not sure why they do that, possibly to uh, camouflage themselves from predators. This is kind of an angular view of the edge of the aboral side. You can see the different sizes of spines as well as the tube feet waving around there. Um, it's pretty pretty cool. Let's have a closer look. The smaller spines towards the middle that are folding in over themselves are uh, covering the anus. To the right of that is the madreporite. The madreporite is one of five genital plates. Each has a, a gonopore where the eggs and sperm are released depending on the sex of the urchin. The madreporite itself is actually modified into a sieve-like structure that controls the water vascular system of this animal. I'm going to touch the madreporite with a probe so you know what I'm talking about. The water vascular system is a pressurized water system that allows the spines as well as the tube feet to move around. Um, it also creates the suction associated with the tube feet, so this allows for the um, animal to move as well as attach to substrates and move things around. This is not a monster from a science fiction movie. This is the mouth of a sea urchin. Um, so he's got five teeth, they're all calcified, and uh, five teeth has to do with the radial symmetry that all echinoderms have, and they all have five body sections, so we also have five teeth here. You'll also notice there's a membrane surrounding the teeth. Um, we actually just call this the lip. So as we move out from around the mouth, um, you see around the lip, there's a lot of smaller uh, modified tube feet. So the larger of these has uh, a bigger, wider base and a large sucker head at the top. These are the buccal tube feet. Um, they've got big suckers on their heads. <laughs> the smaller uh, tube feet, of which there are two different types, both of them have the kind of a flower bud head on them. Uh, both of these ends uh, have uh, pedicellaria on them, so they're pinchers. Um, the larger of these has three pinching appendages on the terminal end, and then the smaller ones just have the two pinching appendages. pretty cool just to watch it, huh? It's pretty wild under the microscope. I could really just sit here for a while and just watch. So one more thing I wanted to touch on was that these, uh, these guys have gills um, and they surround this oral area on the oral surface of the urchin. And you can see them here. They're around the spines and you can see them within the spines kind of in between. Here's a good close-up of them. Um, the tube feet, the regular tube feet are much longer than they are. And uh, these are actually modified tube feet, and they've been modified in, you know, over evolutionary time to actually become gills. And um, so this is how sea urchins breathe. Pretty cool. There's an extreme close-up. You can see them right there, little purple tips.
more tube feet. So here they are. This is our two specimens. You know, we're going to throw them back in the water table. And uh, have no fear, these guys are going back into the ocean. And uh, none the worse.